Today, we're going to continue our Play to Zero webinar series, and we're joined here by Mika Alon and Ashley Gladney discussing live event certification and verification. And if you have questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to put them in the chat and stick around for the Q&A at the very end. This webinar is also being recorded, so if you have to skip out in the middle or if you want to share it with your network, we will be sending it out to all the attendees at the end. And if you want to scan the QR code, it will give you access to previous webinars, uh, along with the rest of our Play to Zero webinar series and other GSA resources like playbooks and case studies. So about half of our attendees today are not, are not GSA members, so they're new to the Green Sports Alliance. So for those of you who are new, we are a 501c6 nonprofit membership-based organization. The Green Sports Alliance leverages the power of sport to drive meaningful impact. We do this by conveying industry stakeholders and engaging fans, athletes, and communities to embrace sustainability. And as a member, you have access to leading business products and innovation through introductions to GSA members, we help in developing campaigns and activations across ideation, execution, sponsorship, and fan and community engagement. We can help promote and tell your stories through the Green Sports Alliance platforms and newsletters. You can become recognized as a leader through our Play to Zero platform, which Brad is going to go through in just a minute, um, and just overall in the sports industry, sustainable sports industry. Uh, you have access to subject matter expertise through the Green Sports Alliance Network. Um, and you have the ability to network, learn, and become inspired at the annual Green Sports Alliance Summit. Last year was held in Seattle, and you can uh, we're going to be announcing our 2024 location and uh, date pretty soon here. And we can help you institutionalize sustainability in creating green teams helping navigate vendor relations and vetting business decisions. And this is just a little bit of what our network looks like. We wanna give a shout out to our members who are on this call, including CRS and CRVA, which is uh, our speakers who are on the call. And it's because of you that we're able to achieve our mission and really keep the needle moving in sustainable sports. Um, and if you want to get involved, uh, you can just email info at greensportsalliance.org, which is in the chat as well. And you can uh, schedule some time with us and join the movement. And I'll pass it to Brad to talk about our Play to Zero platform. Yeah, no, thank you, Katie. And uh, thanks everyone for attending today. Very excited to have you all on and, um, you know, to learn about, you know, the great things that are going on with CRVA and, uh, CSR or CRS, excuse me. Um, but uh, yeah, so Play to Zero, um, really what it is at a high level is just your, your basic utilities tracking platform. So really what we want to do with it is if you're not tracking as an organization with your GSA membership, this comes as a way to A, start tracking, start that benchmarking process um, and really just get a good understanding of where your, you know, your current usage is at for energy, waste, and water. And then as Katie alluded to earlier, this is how we do our Play to Zero awards every year for uh, the annual summit. So um, we look for reductions in 30 of 30%, 50%, and 100% for energy and water. And then we look for diversion rates of 30, 50, or 90% for eligibility for those awards. So um, if you are tracking on another platform, that's amazing. We do have API connections available. So if you do want to apply for an award, you don't have to re-enter all your information and stuff like that. But again, it's really just a great starting point for you know any organization who really wants to just dive into the world of benchmarking and just having a better understanding of you know kind of what that footprint looks like. So, um, but yeah, so be the next host uh, to our Play to Zero webinar series. So, I mean, if you have, you know, topics, things like that, you want to, you know, really share with our overall member network, I think that's a great, uh, it's a great way to really, uh, you know, reach out and kind of get involved. But with that, um, I'll share the Green Ports Line Play to Zero website. And then without further ado, I will pass it back to Katie to introduce our speakers. Thanks, Brad. Um, so we have, 
Mika Alon. He is an environmentalist and former professional basketball player working towards advancing trust and equity in renewable energy markets with Green E and the Center for Resource Solutions. And we have Ashley Gladney, an expert specializing in sustainability for the Charlotte Regional Visitors Authority and Spec Spectrum Center. And in the next hour, we'll learn how to uh, learn about verified carbon offset accounting, gain insights into Green E certifications, and explore carbon offset analyses specific to sport and enter entertainment venues. And now I'll pass it to Ashley. Great. Hi, I'm Ashley Gladney. I'm the Sustainability Program Manager for Charlotte Regional Business Authority, CRVA for short. Um, CRVA manages multiple properties within the city of Charlotte and you're an entity of the city of Charlotte. So we manage the Charlotte Convention Center, NASCAR Hall of Fame, Spectrum Center, Bowplex Coliseum, and Ovens Auditorium, as well as the overall Visit Charlotte brand. So my primary site for multiple years has been Spectrum Center, uh, which is home of the Charlotte Hornets. And we partner with them in our overall sustainability program, as well as all of our other building partners, Janet King and Levy in the building. Um, what kind of kick-started off our sustainability was during COVID, we decided to rebrand our entire sustainability program in the building. And also the city of Charlotte launched a CEOP, which stands for Strategic Energy Action Plan, which um, has a goal to be carbon neutral in all of its municipal buildings by 2030 and a goal for a city overall to be carbon neutral by 2050. So this kind of started our benchmarking into looking at our energy usage, as well as a few of our sustainability features. So we go to the next slide. So one of the big things after we started off our sustainability committee was we did rebrand and do a lot of work during COVID. So we decided in 2021, when staff were coming back more into office, that we wanted to host our first sustainability luncheon that we really launch and show our staff what we're doing sustainability wise in the building how we can advance how we can uh, grow what kind of partnerships we can make and one of the things we thought was important in connection with the CIOP from the city of charlotte was to make this event a carbon neutral event so we started looking at what that meant to certify this event what it meant to offset these things um, and through the Green Sports Alliance, we had heard of the Greeny Offset Program and CSR system. So we reached out to them to see how we could certify this event for it. Um, we just hosted our second annual one. So we went bigger and better this year um, and also certified again this past year with Greeny certification for both energy and carbon offsets for this event. Let me go to the next slide. So one of the main reasons we decided to use Greeny and CSR for carbon offsets and to evaluate our building's electricity and look at what we needed to do was their very simple calculator that they provided for us, um, which we got to enter where we were located, where people were coming from, the overall size of the space, and it gave us a really easy offset. Also, because Greeny doesn't directly set up um, where to purchase carbon offsets, they have verified vendors it gave us the option to pick people who were either local to us or national vendors um, who we could use our offset program with. Um, it made it really easy for us to get the data we needed and a really easy process to get the certification and verify that all of our stuff was. We really wanted to make sure when we were doing an event that was supposed to be focused in sustainability that we were walking the walk and talking the talk and that we were getting as many things certified and claimed that we were actually doing in the building. So. We partnered with CSR and it's a very seamless process for that. Um, you go to the next slide. So once we completed the Greeny calculator um, and verified all of that information, we went and purchased the offsets for that matched the Greeny calculator that it printed that it pointed out for us. And we brought the offsets and received a certification from an offset that says one, it's green certified. We went through TerraPass for the 2021 one. Um, and then we also received certification of that it was a greeny event once they verified the data back from us. So it allowed us to have this licensing, this great claim that we had not only done it, but that it was verified and that we were backing and really walking the walk and talking what we talk. It also helped us out in our overall 
City of Charlotte goals and CIOP as long-term goals. We believe to do some level of carbon offsets for energy in our building, as well as all of the other CRVA buildings. So they just helped make this process extremely streamlined for us. And we have continued our partnership and looked at it for evaluating how we move in any events we have in our building and being able to use this data to offsets and long-term goals for the city offsets. That is all I have for about our green certification process and when we started this process off. So I'm gonna pass it over to Mika. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate you sharing your experience and thank you all for having me as well. I'm always happy to talk about carbon reduction best practices, but specifically this audience is special to me. Um, as a former professional basketball player, it's really important for me to encourage sustainability best practices in the sports world. And I know it's something that's important to both fans, players, and all of you working within the organization. So I'm really happy to share uh, my perspective here and coming from Center for Resource Solutions. So just to give you a brief background of our organization at a larger level, we're a nonprofit based out of San Francisco with the goal to create policy and market solutions to advance sustainable energy. And we've been around for 25 years doing so. Um, so to this effect, we provide a few different streams of work. We provide expert assistance on tricky carbon accounting issues for corporations. Uh, we also have a renewable energy and climate policy team. Uh, we also host renewable energy markets conferences. So we're having one in Singapore um, next year and then one in Denver next year as well. And then the kind of bulk of our program that I work on is the Greeny certification for suppliers and users of renewable electricity, carbon offsets and biomethane all in the voluntary market. Um, and that's kind of what I'll be discussing today and what Ashley was speaking of as well. And you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So some of the benefits of receiving the Greeny certification, once again, this could be for, you know, your purchasing of the actual renewable electricity and offsets, but it's also a certification for an event that you host that, you know, we're certifying your marketing claims. So it really differentiates your event and brand. Um, the attendees are looking to lessen their carbon impact and they want to feel good about the events that they attend. And having this third party certification provides some trust in your company's commitment to sustainability. Um, to that effect, it also provides some consumer credibility. So it's a leading third party verification in the market and it's recognized by many as this gold standard. Um, we've certified over 700 products made with renewable electricity, including many events as well, um, and over 110 million megawatt hours of actual renewable electricity transactions. Um, so it's a, a trusted and credible body. We also provide risk reduction. Um, so, you know, in this in this climate, it's very important to understand that there are, you know, some risks that that entail with making these marketing claims or, or claims of sustainability. Um, but having this greeny certification mitigates some of the legal and reputational risks for our participants in our program because we're providing oversight. We have a team that provides an audit, and we have protocols to make sure that you're following all of the best practices. Next slide, please. So as Ashley had mentioned, we have a pretty, we make this, this process pretty simple for you all. Um, the first step that we always recommend is reduce your electricity usage as, as much as possible. Um, that's really, you know, the best way that you can reduce the impact of your event. But we know that your, you know, sporting events have large implications in terms of carbon. So we've created a process that makes it easy to reduce even with the amount of uh, carbon that you have to use. So the first step is to calculate the carbon emissions and electricity being used at your event. So we have this handy uh, carbon emissions calculator that you can use to help. Um, the next step is to purchase Greeny certified renewable energy or offsets from our certified sellers. So as Ashley had mentioned, we don't actually sell energy or offsets, um, but we have a list of certified sellers that, that you know, we have endorsed and that we trust and that you can use to purchase your, uh, either purchase 100% of electricity consumption at the event or purchase with with uh, renewable electricity or purchase 100% of the emissions associated with carbon offsets. Um, once you've completed one, those two steps, you can get started. Sorry, mm -hmm. I just had one follow-up question on the uh, carbon emissions calculator. Uh, are you able to tell us like kind of the scope of what you guys track specifically? Um, yeah. Scope yeah. one, two, and three? Yeah, we're looking at a, at a high level, all of the emissions. You know, I can send more details in terms of the actual carbon emissions calculator, which might be helpful. But really what we're looking at is there's a lot of aspects that come into your carbon emissions of an event. So this could be the, you know, the lighting and electricity use at the event. It also includes, you know, flights from players that are going across the country. It could include um, some of the, um, you know, the procurement that you're using at your stadium, whether it's 
It's the vendors that you're working with. So there's a lot of different pieces that play into the event. Sometimes it can be difficult to calculate that. And that's why we have this emissions calculator um, that I'd be happy to share as well. And I have my email there too, that you can look up kind of more of the details of how we're getting into the actual calculated emissions. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Um, so as I was mentioning, final step is getting your event certified. So once you've purchased the renewable energy or the offsets um, to, to kind of match the electricity or emissions associated with your event, you can contact up, us, my friend Kiernan at CRS. We'll review some of your claims and review um, review all of your marketing language. And then you can get your event uh, certified by Greeny. And that helps you know with your marketing. You can say that your event is Greeny certified and it's trusted that you're actually using the appropriate amount of electricity or carbon offsets to match the consumption that you need. You can go to the next slide. Um, so that's kind of, I, I gave a brief overview of you know, our program and the Greeny program, but I think it's also important to provide some overview of what is a renewable energy certificate, what is a carbon offset. Um, so these are terms that we're using all the time, but they can be a bit confusing. Um, our renewable energy certificate is, or what we call a REC, represents the environmental attribute of one megawatt hour of renewable electricity generation. Um, so you have that, that generation facility and it produces one megawatt hour of electricity that goes into the grid, but associated with that one megawatt hour of electricity is also a REC. And when you get that REC, that, that is the environmental attribute of that actual uh, elect renewable electricity, and it helps that you can make your claim that you're using renewables. You can go to the next slide, please. So one of the important parts of our program is that we have this greeny stand standard for renewable electricity, ensuring that when you're purchasing the renewable electricity certificate or the REC, that's actually meeting our environmental standard. Um, and that's different on the product associated. So for wind and solar, pretty straightforward. We don't have a lot of re requirements there. Um, but for other products like biomass or hydro, we do. For example, you can't just cut down a tree and burn it and then call that a renewable resource. We want to make sure that you're actually having an impact, a positive impact on the environment. Um, we also have a 15 year new date, and, and this means that all generation sourced in greeny products are less than 15 years old. The idea there is to encourage the development of new renewables in the market. Um, another really key and important part of our standard is we have that it must be surplus to regulation. Um, the point there is that we want to make sure it's actually pushing the needle above and beyond business as usual to ensure you're, you're kind of encouraging the market to move forward. So it's your, your purchase of renewable electricity is not just going towards a compliance market in your state, but you're actually interacting in a voluntary sense and encouraging new renewables going into the industry. Uh, we have some other very specific requirements that you can look at in our long standard, but I won't go all over all of them now. So you can go to the next slide. So that's on the renewable electricity front. Then we also certify carbon offsets. And these are very different. It's important to understand the difference here. The, the REC, which is associated, the environmental attributes associated with the renewable electricity, um, is actually your claim to be using renewables. On the other hand, carbon offset is a certificate re representing the reduction of one metric ton of carbon dioxide or equivalent emissions. The way that this works is you have carbon offset projects. So this could be, um, you know, a forest project, a wind project, or or reducing emissions from um, from cows and other you know agriculture. So there's a lot of different projects that can reduce emissions. Um, and if you can prove that your project product is has additionality, is actually uh, having an impact in reducing carbon emissions, then it creates a carbon credit. Um, there's project level level certification standards that are important that these projects must must meet. Um, but then that will produce a carbon credit. And then once again, the Greeny certification is providing oversight of the transaction of the credit to make sure there's no bad actors, there's no double counting or double selling or, or deception or any mistakes. So we're providing, you know, we're, we're reducing your risk and making sure that you're getting a quality product when you're purchasing a Greeny certified offset. And as I had mentioned, we have a list of certified sellers for renewable electricity and offsets. And you can be sure that if you're purchasing an offset or a rec, from our list of sellers that you're getting a quality product and that it's not being double counted, it minimizes your risk and that's actually having an incremental incremental and an additive effect to the environment. You can go to the next slide. This here is just to point out that we've been cited and endorsed in many sustainability protocols. Um, one that we like to point to is the US Green Building Council's lead. One way to gain points is by sourcing Greeny certified energy. 
and the NRDC's Greening Advisor for Sports, which recommends greening certified energy and offsets as best practices. Uh, next slide, please. Here's a, view, a few examples from some Greeny certified events. Um, so we have with Green Build, um, they released a press release, and this is kind of an example of something that you could do as an organization um, by getting certified with Greeny. We have some marketing language that we suggest, and then you can actually show the projects. They, they have a list here of the two projects that they, um, that they invested in by buying these offsets, and they can show the actual impact that the projects have. And then we have the San Jose earthquakes that had a um, part of the MLS, and they had their Go, Go Green event on July 25th against uh, the DC United. And they dedicated a portion of each ticket that the fans purchased to actually purchasing Greeny certified renewable energy to cover the electricity associated with the event. And that was a great way to really involve your fans into the sustainability journey. And by having the Greeny certification in that, there's actually some trust that the fans, when they purchase their ticket and they pay a little bit more to purchase renewable electricity, and then it also has this certification body where it's Greeny certified by a third party. They feel comfortable and confident that they're, they're actually you know, contributing to the sustainability story of the event and organization. You can go to the next slide, please. So I have my con contact information here, and I wanted to just highlight a few key takeaways. I know some of this information can be uh, you know, complicated or confusing getting into the rec market or carbon offsets, but you, know, you have the tools to do something. You can, you can have my contact information right here. Um, you know, you have our calculator, you have our list of sellers where you can go and start to procure renewables or offsets from. Um, so I would love to, you know, please reach out to me. I would love to talk to all of you from your organizations, especially from sports organizations. Um, that's something that's important to me. And I'd love to help, you know, the sports community start to reduce their carbon impact in the events that we have. And that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mika and uh, Ashley as well. Um, really, just I have a few follow-up questions for you both if you want to um, turn on your cameras. Um, starting, starting with Ashley. So, you know, with CRVA, you know, we 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 got the why. You know, is it important for you all? You know, especially with your you know strategic energy action plan. You know, with the city. Um, but from your perspective, and from you know the CRVA's perspective, why should other sports teams, leagues, and venues do the same? I think it's important for other sports teams, leagues, and venues to do the same because we know as venues, we want to entertain people, but with that, we bring a lot of energy usage and a lot of carbon emissions that are just almost the nature of our business. So if we are pushing sustainability and it's one of our missions as our building, then we need to look at things that we can do to offset and we need to make sure that when we're doing these things, we're doing it the proper way which is one of the main reasons we decided to use for Greeny because of how recognized it was and the calculator and the fact that it was going to be verified back for us. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Um, and then I, I, and then I know Mika kind of alluded to this, but he said reductions is obviously a huge, huge component of, you know, this process prior to, um, you know, buying these certifications. So from your perspective, I mean, what types of reductions are you guys um, looking at right now, because as we all know, <laughs> Rex and, and uh, carbon offset credits are not cheap by any means. So the best way to really save money is to, you know, really reduce first and foremost prior to any, you know, certification. So, yeah. Absolutely. As part of the city's Power Down the Crown program, we have been tracking all of our energy and greenhouse gas emissions since 2020 with the goal of ultimate reduction. Um, as people may know, Spectrum Center will be going under major construction in the next couple of years. So the reduction in our energy usage and upgrading our system is going to be um, the main one of the main goals we're tackling in our construction project is updating our system, more LED lighting, um, better HVAC systems, all to reduce our energy usage in our building and our, improve our greenhouse gas emission numbers. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. I'm excited to see kind of where those results, uh, you know, when they come to fruition. Um, but then turning to uh, Mika, Mika, so um, obviously the carbon offsets world and Rex world can be a little bit confusing to a lot of people, especially, um, you know, if, if, if you're not really familiar, but, you know, uh, I'm, I'm familiar with Green Ian because I've worked on lead projects. So, I mean, when you're looking at offsets, you know, what is the difference between a Green E certification as opposed to other offsets or recs that are out there and like what are red flags you would usually look for you know yeah. if you're an entity kind of looking into this world yeah absolutely i think you know what the greeny certification does is especially if you're a consumer and you're purchasing recs or offsets 
it, it kind of makes it so you don't need to worry about all these tricky issues. And that's something that I've noticed when talking to corporate you know, purchasers, something that makes them comfortable. Um, what we're providing is oversight of the actual transaction. So we have a team that, that does an audit and makes sure that the actual transaction is being done correctly. To that effect, we also have a standard that these products <clears throat> must meet. And for renewable electricity, I went over our standard a little bit. For carbon offsets, we rely on other uh, standards that actually are, are certifying the project on the project level standards. So we have a list of endorsed standards. That's ones like VAR or the gold standard. So they're, they're making sure that the product is actually a quality product. Um, so definitely, you know, if you're purchasing an offset, especially with some of the scrutiny in the market, it's important that they're being certified. That is an extremely important first step by these mm -hmm. other, you know, project le level certifications. But the Greeny certification is also making sure that the actual transaction is ever selling you that offset is also acting in an in appropriate and best practices. So that's where, you know, when you're purchasing an offset or a rec, you can do your own research, but what's nice about the Greeny certification is we're doing all of that for you and we're providing an audit, we're providing oversight of the transaction to ensure that you don't have to worry about, you know, a few years or a few months down the line, there being an article that comes out that your procurement and your claims were actually, you know, not having an impact, which we know you one don't want to do because you're all doing this because you're passionate and you want to have a positive impact, but also it looks bad on the organization. And, you know, it's not always something that is your fault necessarily because you didn't know. So that's where we see our greenie certification is really helpful to the buyers in the program. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely think it's a it's it's definitely a strategy to help avoid you know greenwashing claims and things like that. So especially which is you know because that's very prevalent within the industry. Um, but from offsets and recs, like what are trends right now? I know like uh I, I haven't looked recently, but I know the prices were going up you know year over year for a while there as it seemed to slow down. Or what are you seeing kind of in that front? Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting because uh, what we've noticed is that the price of RECs or offsets actually depends a lot, one, on the market, they vary a lot, but also on the actual project. <clears throat> so when you're purchasing a renewable energy certificate, um, you can purchase, if it's an unbundled renewable energy certificate, you can purchase that from anywhere in the United States or Canada. But some grids are, you know, more dirty. So, some grids, for example, you know, a grid, there, there's a lot of Texas wind in our program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are, are sometimes that's a cleaner grid now because there's so much renewable in that location, whereas there's other other parts of the country or other projects that may have a, a higher pricing on the renewable energy certificate because your purchase is actually is, is possibly more impactful. So we what we've seen is that, yes, the market changes the price of recs and offsets. But if you actually want to look at the price, a lot of it depends on how impactful is the project that you're investing in. Um, and that's something that when you're looking at our list of sellers, you can ask them, I, you know, we don't sell offsets and we don't sell recs, but we point you to sellers who will, who will provide you pricing and will provide you some more information. Some, some projects, you know, have, have a process that helps the local environment or there's a, a project that helps with bee pollination, things like that, that actually have other impacts besides just purchasing a renewable energy certificate. Oh, that's awesome. That's super awesome. There are some upcoming Green Sports Alliance events and opportunities. Um, based on popular demand, we are creating a reusable products playbook. So for all of you stadiums that have a reusable partner, um, the, you're, if you're a reusable uh, organization or if you're interested in going reusable, you can contact myself, uh, Michael Kraus on our team or Matt Adler, and I'll put their emails in the chat. If my very old computer will allow me to do things like this, <laughs> I apologize. Um, and then just a few events coming up with the Green Sports Alliance. We do have another webinar in November. Um, so mark your calendars, November 15th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Um, Eastern. Um, so this webinar is a deep dive into another one of our playbooks called Building for the Next Generation. Uh, there's about 25 new sports and entertainment venues in process or scheduled for design and construction and many more to be remodeled over the coming years. Uh, venue owners and design build partners have an incredible opportunity to deliver transformative change through the built environment. So if you haven't had a chance to look at the playbook, it is live for anyone on our website 
and uh, I'll put in the chat where you can register for that as well. And in December, we're joined by four Green Sports Alliance members to engage in sustainable live events, um, very similar to this one, but a little with a little different perspective on it. And we'll announce that in our next newsletter. Yeah, and and K Day, just to add on to that December webinar, really, yeah, today was really the uh, the Rex verification and you know carbon offsets verification. For that December one, we'll look into more, you know, ISO standards, you know, things like that as well for live event certification. So uh, just, uh, you know, if you're expecting some more of that today, it's definitely coming down the pipeline. So uh, just stay tuned. Yeah, and if you guys haven't seen this in the newsletter already, um, it's a new opportunity. So you can scan the QR code and fill out just a three question form. We're, we're working to be able to connect sports teams, leagues, and venues to some of our solutions partners um, who are willing to do a pilot program, have interest in sustainable sponsorship or in-kind sponsorship, or have internship or entry-level jobs available. Um, so this is open to sports teams uh, as well as corporate members uh, just to kind of gauge who uh, has interest. And then in the coming months, we'll be able to make the connections with you guys. And um, the purpose of this is really just to maximize the sports greening scale and impact and really get our next generation involved in sustainable sport. And now we have a few more questions for Mika and Ashley. Um, these came in prior to the event. Um, so the first question is, uh, and either of you can answer this, what recommend, recommendations do you have for lower level employees to be certified or push green objectives within their organization? Try to find a connection. Um, if your organization doesn't already have sustainability as one of its kind of missions or ESGs to find some kind of connection um, where sustainability can fit in and start small. I would also say make sure you have some validity for yourself that you know you kind of know what you're talking about when you're going to them or you have some kind of backing. Um, a lot of mine initially was about, well, this venue has tried this or this is verified. Um, so having that kind of backing was helpful in pushing our programs forward. Um, I would also say maybe if your city or state is pushing some sustainability initiatives, it's always great for teams to be aligned and one of the leaders in their respective cities and states as well. Yeah, Ashley, follow up on that. Were you able to leverage the uh, strategic energy action plan to kind of help see uh, accomplish some of your goals? Absolutely. Having that city goal and being a city owned facility, being all CRV buildings are city owned facilities. Um, definitely helps you leverage and kind of motivate in pushing forward some more sustainable actions and moving some conversations forward a little faster because mm -hmm. there are initiatives and, you know, as kind of these prestige buildings in the city, you want to also be the leaders in the city. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Micah and, or Mika, excuse me, anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. I would say, you know, talk to me. Um, I, I can help you through this process. I think it's important when you're, if you're lower in the organization, you come with maybe some some details about it. Maybe you go through the carbon reduction calculator, you find out how much it's gonna, you get a pricing on the racks or the offsets that you wanna purchase and say, hey, this is how much it's gonna cost. Um, and you have, have a plan when you come into, into the conversation with people who are higher up in your organization. Um, because that's something they always want to see. So, you know, if you're if you're looking to start, you can talk to me, send me an email, set up a call. I can help you figure out, you know, your the emissions associated with events. I can help you figure out how much it costs to purchase the recs or offsets, and that may help going into those conversations to have some, you know, financial details and, and a plan of moving forward. Awesome. I think Brad might be frozen. Me? No, go ahead. <laughs> Next question. Okay. Um, okay. I, I think this one's interesting. What are some good carbon offset options specifically for music shows? Hmm. I, I would once again point to our, our certified list of sellers. Um, and I would, you know, contact any of the sellers in our list. If you're not going through our list of sellers, I think it's important to note. Um, we we certify endorsed project level certifications. So that's Vera, Gold Standard, 
ECS, the Climate Action Reserve and American Carbon Registry. Those are projects that are, that's a certification of the actual projects. Um, but in terms of, you know, what offsets you can, you can procure and you can purchase, it really depends. You can, you know, talk to a seller and, and see where you want your story. What, what do you want to build your story around? Because the, the project that you purchase, you can then, you know, build a story around that project and feel like you're having an impact on a, uh, in a community that's maybe close to yours, or maybe it's a forestation project because that's something you're passionate about. Um, but just to make sure that they do have some level of verification and certification is extremely important. And other than that, you kind of can decide what you want to build your story around, and that'll help you frame your mind. But they're all applicable to, you know, entertainment and music events. Mika, I have a follow-up on that. So in terms of, uh, you know, offset projects, uh, you mentioned Texas earlier having quite a bit. I mean, where, what is the makeup of where a lot of these projects are? So for example, say you're, you know, in the Chicago area, your team, you want to, um, you know, get a localized, you know, like closer project that's more, you know, affects your direct kind of region. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, are, are there just areas that generally have a lot more, you know, yeah, options? When I was speaking about the um, the Texas projects, I was talking about renewable energy. They have a lot of wind because there's space, and there's it's a really great space place for that resource, and also the, it's you know e easier to develop the land there. So that was talking about renewable energy certificates. In terms of carbon offset projects, a lot of really great projects that I've heard about are projects that are uh, maybe keeping a forest alive and then using the carbon credit to actually invest back into the community. So you can look for projects that are having, you know, an actual implication in your community by talking to the seller or talking to someone who's part of that project and seeing where is, you know, the revenue from this project going. And so some of the projects that are more impactful are the ones that are, are both possibly local or even, you know, if you want to have an impact on the community that's not local, but you can be sure that when you're purchasing that credit and it may even be a little bit more expensive, but, but it's actually not just, you know, saving a forest, but it's actually helping the community there as well. So there's, you know, I don't know the specifics of all the projects or where, you know, are hotspots for projects, but I would say talk to a seller and figure out where you want to have that impact. And also if there's more of an impact on communities, because some of that, some of your, your purchase is going towards communities as well, is a recommendation I have. I'll say for the city of Charlotte, um, Duke Energy is one of the sellers on um, Greeny's website, and they're our main energy provider for the Carolinas. Um, they're the energy provider for Spectrum Center and all of our CRV buildings. Um, and I know that as the city of Charlotte, we're in their Green Source Advantage program. So we are helping with their solar projects, specifically in the Charlotte region that will help power and kind of help to green their grid. Um, we have signed as all city buildings to be a part of that progress to help clean the Duke Energy Grid. So those are some of the projects that we're investing in that are helping in our local community for um, creating the grid and offsets. That's great. Yeah, you got to you gotta love those local partnerships with your local yeah. utilities. Um, for, with that, though, I mean, it, it, um, uh, <laughs> Mika, it, it, are you seeing that um, with other utility providers in other you know states? And maybe this is not a question you may have an answer to, um, but is it worth like working with your local utility provider to see what options they have as well? Absolutely. A lot of the participants in our program are utilities. And I, I do like to be careful not to point someone towards a specific participant in our program. Um, but I would recommend talking to your local utility. And actually, it's really helpful for us when you talk to your local utility, if they don't offer a greeny option, asking for it, because that's one way that, you know, then we have utilities or other participants come to us and say, hey, we've had a lot of customers saying they want a greeny pro product because they want that certification, they want the, that protection, and then they'll, mm -hmm. they'll ask us to become certified. And so that's a great way, you know, talk to your utility. A lot of them already do offer a product. And if they don't, by talking to them, it actually may, you know, make a difference there. So we always appreciate that as well. Cool. Thank you. This, uh, we have a question kind of pertaining to location. So it's how does renewable energy slash carbon offsets compare in cost to our current rates? And this person lives in the Midwest, where rates are typically lower than in other areas. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't look um, actually at the pricing of the products. It, it kind of depends on the structure. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can purchase renewable electricity. Um, you can purchase it from your utility. Often they'll offer an opt-up program where you can purchase. Depends on, I don't know the you know, specifics for that utility, but you, you pay a little bit more and then you're buying a green option. You can also source unbundled RECs. So you can purchase it from someone who's selling RECs from projects all over the United States or Canada. You can also enter a 
well, a PPA, a power purchase agreement, where you're actually making an investment into a renewable energy development project, and then you're you're locking in a price for a certain amount, you know, an extended period of time. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can structure your rate, and, and a lot of it is is hopefully, you know, to actually decrease your your burden and your price. Um, I don't know the specific numbers. Same with carbon offsets as well. Um, I don't I don't have an idea of the numbers, but there are participants in our program who will point you to, you know numbers and also programs that are cheaper or more impactful so that's that's where we really suggest talking to someone in our program like a broker or a seller who will give you a good idea of where how much you can expect to be paying and if you follow up with an email i can point you to a list of you know some brokers in our program who may be able to give you a better idea of pricing yeah i can send you guys these questions afterwards too and um, there, both Ashley and Mika's emails are in the chat if you guys want um, some one-on-one -on -one communication with them. Um, so we'll do one more. Uh, what is your view on communicating carbon neutral status ahead of an event? And then mm. it says, we want to include such commitment in the event promotion, but we can't know the actual emissions until the event is completed. Good question. <laughs> I would recommend working with our team on that. Um, I think it, the, the, some of the risk is if you don't have any uh, certification or verification helping you along with that process. But if you if you contact my team and you, and you we actually can verify some of those claims, um, then we'd be happy to work with you and help provide a certification for those claims um, and make sure that you know however much carbon that you're emitting during the event, you're purchasing the appropriate offsets or recs to cover uh, that electricity consumption or carbon uh, consumption. So uh, that's where there's some risk always if you don't have, if you're if you're not acting appropriately, but also if you don't have someone else making sure that these claims are, are accurate and that's where we kind of come in. So that would be my recommendation. Yeah, and it seems like um, a lot of people, a lot of these questions are uh, just kind of concerns on um if they do decide to to do offsets or recs so i think the answer would just be to to talk with a professional with Mika, and just kind of see you know what's what's out there and, and what are the options available for you guys when uh when trying to achieve carbon neutrality or become close to it um i i, so I guess I have, anyone... more, I have one more question as well so i mean language around renewable energy credits i think is kind of a very relevant issue right now because i think some people think of it as like hey we're 100 percent renewably powered or something like that so from your guys's perspective i mean what have you seen or i guess this is more of a meeting question like what are those like what is the actual term you will pay if you have 100 percent renewable energy credits for your facility like what would you actually call that yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. And that's where I think the distinction between renewable energy credits and carbon offsets is extremely important. Your purchase of renewable energy credits is actually your consumption of renewable electricity. So if you purchase 100 percent renewable energy certificates um, that covers 100 percent of the amount of electricity that you're consuming as an organization, you can accurately make the claim that you are using 100 percent renewables. And it doesn't mean you need to have a solar panel on your roof. You can purchase it renewables through a lot of different ways. And this is why RECs are, are in the market. This is kind of the function that they serve is that you can you can have a, a power purchase agreement, you can purchase from your utility, you can purchase um, unbundled, but you can purchase these RECs and, and accurately make the claim that I'm using, I'm using renewable and that I'm not you know, having this carbon em emissions. On the other hand, with carbon offsets, if you purchase 100% carbon offsets to cover your carbon consumption during the event, you cannot claim that you're using, you know, that you're, you're using renewables or that your event had no carbon emissions. What your claim is that you're covering your carbon emissions with these offset projects. Um, so it's a, it's a different, it's a different kind of timeline. Your renewable electricity purchase of RECs is actually your consumption. And then offsets is, you know, is, is making sure that any other carbon emissions that you have are being offset by these projects that you're investing. Yes, and that's exactly what Spectrum Center did. Um, we used the language that was suggested to us by Greeny for how we would state what exactly we were doing. Um, we also did work very closely with Duke Energy to have a 
big understanding of what our building was using energy and what grid energy. They actually sent us our energy mix of what grid purchase is going to our building every month. So we have a full idea of how much is coming from sustainable sources versus how much is coming from non-sustainable sources directly from our energy provider. Oh, that's awesome. No, oh, thank you for that. I think, I think that's a good call out. I mean, just because the language around it, I think can be tempting to try and make some misleading claims. And that's something we're definitely trying to avoid. Build on that briefly, and, um, as Ashley had mentioned, you know, Duke Energy is providing this detailed description of, of the product that they're getting. That's a part of being part of our program. So, you know, Duke Energy is a part of the Greenie program. So we require them. We have a marketing compliance audit. We have a verification audit and we're requiring this language to be provided to their customers. Um, so that's that's some of the benefit of purchasing from the Greenie certified sellers as well. Yeah. And, and thank you, Ashley and Mika, for joining us today. Hopefully everyone who was able to attend was able to get some insight, learn something new about, you know, at least about how recs work, how offsets work, how we can use them effectively to help achieve our, you know, sustainability goals. Because in the end, it's, uh, you know, it, it helps, but we always do need to keep reducing as well on top of everything to, uh, you know, keep hitting that needle. But thank you so much for being here and thank you to all our attendees. Um, we love you all and have a great rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>